Well, hello, I'm Simon Tustin, and I'm the executive officer of AID. And I've got with me here, Lord Curry, who's on the board of our trustees. Well, Lord Curry, thank you very much for agreeing to, to be interviewed. Um, could I ask you to start by just saying a little bit about your, your, your background, a bit about yourself, please? Yes, thank you, uh, Simon. I was brought up in a Christian family, a devout Christian family church three times on a Sunday and also Bible study during the week uh, on a family farm in Northumberland. Uh, I've always wanted a farm. I left school at 15 against my father's wishes because I was determined to go back home and work on the farm. Then went to agricultural college. I met my wife. We uh, got married uh, in 1966. And then a few years after that, we managed to secure the tenancy of a farm of our own. My Christian faith has shaped my entire life. I committed my life personally to the Lord Jesus at the age of 13 and uh, have tried to follow him uh, during the course of my life. I failed regularly, but he has uh, supported me through lots of uh, troubled waters during the course of my life. And then um, I got involved um, uh, when I was in my 50s in the world of agricultural politics. It always fascinated me and uh, found myself in the thick of it in uh, chairing organizations like the Meat and Livestock Commission during the BSE crisis. And that led on to various other responsibilities, writing a report for government in 2002 on the future of food and farming. And then eventually, miraculously and incredibly, I found myself appointed as a crossbench peer in the House of Lords. Donald, thank you very much. Um, just turning to AID, if I may, there are hundreds of uh, charities involved in Africa. Why is Anglican International Development the one you've chosen to become involved with? It's a very interesting question. I've been involved in a number of charitable activities here at home in the United Kingdom. But a moment arrived when I was approached by David Holloway, our chairman, uh, 10 years ago as to whether I would consider being a trustee of AID. AID was a new charity and uh, David was looking to form a board of trustees. I had a re deep concern for Africa, having been a number of times and seen the immense challenges there are in Africa. And I think it was God's timing, not mine, that led to David approaching me to be involved in the ID. But it came at a moment when I felt it was right for me to accept this uh, request, this invitation, uh, particularly to be involved in a Christian, biblically based charity that wanted to work with the church and try and reach people, reach communities through that infrastructure of the church in South Sudan. That's what really appealed to me, not just any other secular charity, but a charity that was determined to try and deliver a Christian response to the many challenges that are faced in South Sudan. Lord Curry, thanks very much. Um, just turning to agriculture in particular, as we've heard, you've got decades of experience in agriculture. What are the particular problems in South Sudan and what can AID do to make a difference? The potential in South Sudan for growing its own food, for developing its agriculture is huge. And it's so frustrating that a fertile country like South Sudan, the River Nile runs through South Sudan. It has some of the most fertile land in Africa. And yet because of conflict, because of civil war, because of tribal disruption, they grow very little of their own food. They, an agriculture minister told me a number of years ago, he thought they grew about 7% of their food needs. So a population of about 10 or 12 million people only growing 7% of their own food. The rest has to be imported. And of course, a lot of the people go hungry. They suffer from famine. Uh, and so there is a huge challenge and a huge opportunity 
to help South Sudan grow its own food. And for me, with my background, this is a problem I really would like to address. And as soon as the political world in South Sudan is stable enough, uh, and we can begin to explore the potential opportunities that are there. I would love to try and make a difference. Well, look, I'm just picking up on about politics and political difference. As a working member of the House of Lords, what opportunities does that give you concerning Africa? There are a number of all party groups in Parliament concerned about Africa. And I try to attend those meetings if I possibly can. They organize for ambassadors and others and ministers to attend these meetings so that we can discuss and explore how we can help from the House of Lords and from the House of Commons, from Parliament generally, in addressing these challenges in Africa. So for me to have access to ministers, to have access to senior civil servants, to have access to ambassadors, is a real opportunity to try and ex understand the issues better and try and also explore potential solutions. So it's a huge privilege to be there and to try and contribute in the very, well, the very small way, but hopefully contribute to help and uh, improve the lives of those who are suffering and uh, enduring uh, circumstances that are way beyond anything in our own experience. Lord Curry, thank you very much indeed for giving us the time and, and for all you've been telling You're us. Welcome. We're very grateful. Thank you.